Remember Jesse Holly? I do remember Jesse Holly. Good friend, former colleague, Jesse Holly. He went off the other week about Micah Parsons probably being the most selfish player on the Dallas Cowboys. And he said it came down to Micah's desire to remain a pass rusher. And that's hurting the team as that preference is supposedly keeping him from developing into an all-around great defender. Quote from Jesse. One of the reasons that Micah does not want to play linebacker is it's too much of a responsibility. Maybe it's just the youth in him. Micah doesn't want to study. Micah doesn't want to focus in. And I truly believe Micah wants to be great for Micah. That went viral. Micah was trending on social media Friday. And his mom weighed in on Facebook basically saying this is ridiculous. He'll do whatever. He'll play wherever. Micah Parsons addressed this criticism on his podcast yesterday. At the end of the day, we were just, end of the day, we were just outperformed, out-schemed, however you want to put it. Like They had an answer for everything. And people saying, well, why ain't you go to linebacker? Because, you know, well, they guess should... what? The packages are in for me to go to linebacker. There's multiple packages, multiple variations. But I can only play what it's called. Whatever they're calling, whoever personnel they're putting on, I'm not putting out personnel. I'm not putting out... Uh, the calls, there, nothing's coming from me. So you could put that and sh put that wherever you want to be or wherever you want to put it, but they're not coming from me. The packages are in. I've even told multiple players, coaches, that I'm very fine playing linebacker and playoffs if that's what y'all want me to do. I just want to win. Wow. So we have three different things here from this podcast, and there's a reason that all these networks are playing it nonstop this morning. I'm just telling you, and you know I'm here to just tell you how it's going to be deciphered. We try to break it down the way it should actually be deciphered and not just, you know, create media mm -hmm. porn headlines. But the way all of this is going to be deciphered is the team around me defensively is not good enough. Uh, they did not go all in last year, and Jerry Jones need to do, needs to do what he said at the Senior Bowl. And my coaching is somewhat of an issue as well. I can only do, whenever you hear a player say that, they're calling out their coaching. I can only do what's being called. It's not me. Take it however you want. So that is Micah Parsons taking slight shots at ownership, at coaching, and at teammates. That's the way I'm reading all of this. That, that, slight, slight. It's going to be turned into much, much more. I, uh, I disagree with Jesse about this whole linebacker take. And Jesse sometimes will listen, so uh, feel free to text. We can go back and forth on it. You know, we won that. That's one of your biggest show victories is having Micah Parsons Every now and then. be a pass rusher, and you ended up winning. When Micah Parsons is a linebacker, uh, I totally disagree with Jesse about that. I don't care to see him back there at all. It's I mean, Now, were there times, maybe? I don't even know how good Micah is a linebacker, to be honest with you. I, I don't remember like three standout crazy plays from Micah Parsons playing linebacker. He's I mean, really good rushing from the middle. Yeah, when he but plays I'm linebacker, talking about. But in coverage, he's nothing to, nothing special. Would he have totally solved or gone a long way in solving this team's run D issues? I, I, I don't know about that. Is he great in coverage? So like, I don't know how great Mike. Now, I assume enough time there, Micah Parsons is going to be great at anything. I disagree. So I disagree with Jesse from a linebacker standpoint. Look, I mean, you got to ask yourself, what is the more valuable spot for him to be in from a team perspective? I mean, it's it's, it's the edge rusher, man. It just is. It's, we we know this. We have enough information on this. It's just a more important position to be, and he impacts each play more by far as a as a pass rusher than a linebacker. Now, does he impact the running game more as a linebacker? Absolutely, absolutely. A lot of times, pass ru edge rushers are are are, are upfield by the time. The running back gets the ball and they blow right by him. So, yes, from a run game perspective, no doubt. But you get to impact the overall scope of the game more as an edge. Because let's just say you're a linebacker and then you hop into coverage and they throw somewhere else. You didn't really impact that play that much unless you blanketed the guy so, so badly that you gave the guy nowhere else to throw to. But other than that, you didn't really impact the play. They went away from you. Give me this team's you or Peyton. Give me this team's second leading Sack. S -s -s Sack player. 
Demarcus Lawrence. Yeah, I was going to guess Tank. No. How many how many sacks did Tank Lawrence have this year? Uh, I was going to say seven, but it's not even close. Not even close. Four? Four. Dante Fowler? Uh, not Dante Fowler. He had four. Uh, let's see. Uh, Dexter Coakley. <laughs> no. Um, it's not Sam Williams, is it? Sam Williams was third on the team with wow! four and a half sacks. Whoa. Keep going. Uh, who's Jerry's guy? Uh, yeah. Is that it? Yep. Dorrance? Dorrance. Dorrance Armstrong was second on the Cowboys with seven and a half sacks. So in order to make this linebacker argument to me, you got to then tell me who's going to rush the passer. And they don't have it. Dorrance Armstrong had seven and a half sacks. I don't even remember Dorrance playing for like 13 of the games. I mean, like noticing yeah. him. You know what I mean? Like that, that is crazy to me. And then Sam Williams had four and a half and Tank had four. I don't know about you. I don't want those guys rushing the pass without Micah Parsons. So that's my that's my response yeah, I agree. to that. But the bigger story here is not that. The bigger story here is what Jesse Holly had to say about Micah Parsons, the person and the teammate. That's the bigger story here because y'all, I'm here to tell you that this is being echoed in more places than just Jesse Holly. Jesse is saying this for a reason. He spent some time in that building. He spent some time there mm -hmm. within the walls of the Ford Center at the Star in Frisco. And let me repeat to you what he said about Michael Parsons. Too much of a responsibility. Maybe it's the youth in him. He doesn't want to study. He doesn't want to focus. I believe Micah wants to be great for Micah. Have we been hearing other things like this? We, we've heard things. We've seen a we've lot of smoke. Things. What we have to decipher now in the Metroplex is whether Micah Parsons is just acting like a typical superstar or is Micah Parsons going overboard and becoming a problem and a distraction for the Dallas Cowboys. That's the question. Because you can you can talk about this stuff with any superstar. Kobe Bryant was selfish. Kobe Bryant was entitled. Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, unapproachable jerk. If you want to call him that in the last dance. You can say this about anyone. Lawrence Taylor, all his issues. Is this typical or is it a problem? Because you hear some things that sound like a problem or is this what comes with the territory with the diva big dog that's the question here well it it, it definitely comes with the territory i mean like that's he's going to be under a microscope he's a he's a he's a high profile player on a high profile team uh so he is absolutely going to get scrutiny praise that is sometimes due and sometimes undue unjust uh that's just the reality of it. yeah we've heard some of these things you know, I, whether it's whether it's true or not, and whether it's youthful uh, issues or not, they're reality. And he's about to make a, a bag of money, a bag of money. And you don't want to have questions about your integrity, your work ethic, your character, your teammate, your your ability to be a teammate when you get that money. Do you think there's any chance? Let's just say all the things that we've been hearing and what Jesse mm -hmm. said is true. Do you think there's any chance? That Jerry Jones would entertain a trade of no, Micah Parsons. No, because the Cowboys don't walk away from good players. They don't I, believe in that. Philosophically, they yeah. don't buy into that. Would it be like if, 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 you know, like let's just say Jerry's 60 years old today and not 85 or whatever. The prudent move, you have two options. You sign all these guys and you keep running it back. Or you say, you know what? Let's be bold. And you trade CD and Micah and Dak and you get yourself – Two seven first round draft picks, and you say, "Let's go." Yeah, we'll put the faith in Will McClay because Will's shown that he can draft good players. Put the faith in Will McClay, and let's rebuild this thing. If you really want to get down, is it risky? You bet. There is a chance that you're the Chicago Bears, and there's also the chance that you become the Detroit Lions with a really good roster, very very young, pretty cheap, and is in a conference championship game and should be in the Super Bowl. If I told you you could only re-sign one between Lamb and Parsons and maybe think about dealing the other one for some assets, I don't even hesitate. Oh, right I, now. I would sign Lamb. I, Lamb and I would trade Micah. I Micah's going to get you two ones. 
So would Lamb. Lamb could do at least one, but I think people would teams would value the edge more still. So I would I would trade Micah. That'd Tolo Tolo Trey Parsons is exactly what Jerry wants in this organization. Um, mm. Mike is the perfect type of player for the Cowboys. Great player, also part of the problem. This is text from Jason. Perfect Cowboy. So talented, great player, but soft. He whines. He's dramatic. He's just not tough. And, you know, some would accuse him of a disappearing act in the second half of the season. Bobby has brought that up as an issue, even though Micah said, I'm at peace with my performance against Green Bay. There are those statistically that said it was his worst game of his three-year career. What did PFF have on that? The, the grade, the number. Uh, for the for the uh, for the game, he was a 62.1, and that is eh, bad. 60 is their baseline, so he was basically league average. That's not what you want. Uh, his pass rush grade was a 74. That's pretty good. Tackle grade was a 39. That's bad. Run defense, six, uh, 50. 50, that's bad. And his coverage grade was a 62. That's right about league average. That's not what you're looking for from your, uh, from your, your game-changing edge rusher. rusher. Yeah, guys, on the fan text, 877-801-1053, the 361 says Micah is basically Luka Doncic of football. Micah Ooh. equals Luka. Good point there. 469 says CD over Micah, like you said, if it came down to it. And 469 says, yep, it's time to trade Micah. Is this us turning like we normally do, or has Micah Parsons become a little unlikable? You know, that, that Luka comparison is very interesting. Like, Luka has become, Basic said this on G-Bag, sometimes it's really, really hard to like Luka Doncic when he's out there whining and crying about everything, and I'm, I'm starting to feel that way about Micah Parsons. Jesse just said, call me when you have a little bit of time. Um, so thanks, Mr. Fourth and Long. I'll finish this up. I'll wrap this up by saying this. If the Cowboys shocked the world and stunned everyone with a, an announcement out of the blue that they are trading Micah Parsons, I'm hearing enough things behind the scenes that I would understand why. That's the sentence I'll use to finish this up. They're not going to do it. They never will. Jerry never will. He's too much of a star. He's sellable. He's a beast, obviously. But if the shocking news came out that they dealt Parsons for a ton of draft capital, I would understand why based upon what Jesse said and some others are echoing.